hello and welcome back to another series review. My name is Colleen, I read a lot of series and most of them I haven't finished yet. But I do have one to speak about today. And that is the Rebel of the Sands trilogy by Alwyn Hamilton. So as per usual I'm going to talk about each book individually, a little bit about the plot and things like that. Um, then I will come back, talk about my ratings and what I think about the series overall and uh, yeah so after I summarize the first book there will be a picture up for spoilers so if you haven't read the books and you don't want to be spoiled you know do with that what you will. So as I said it's a trilogy so you have Rebel of the Sands, Traitor to the Throne, and Hero at the Fall. So the first book I think was the hardest for me personally. Uh, it's really cool themed so it takes place somewhere in the Middle East. There's a sultan and this girl lives in a dead-end town called Duskwa Dustwalk uh, where there is a factory that turns out guns and that's the reason why their town exists. And she wants nothing more to escape and then gets caught up within this rebellion that's been happening in her country. I struggled with this book quite a bit because it's written very much like a western uh, which is something that I do like and I did talk about a bit during my vlog for all three of these books and uh, I kept on wanting to picture the west when it's very much the east and I didn't find that there was quite enough description uh, for me anyways to really cement that it was the east and not the west so that's how I felt about Rebel of the Sands the second book is Traitor to the Throne. I like this better than Rebel of the Sands. I found it easier to picture and there was a lot more political intrigue within this book and a lot more action. Uh, it picks up where the last one left off uh, and in this book their camp gets raided, Amani gets captured by her aunt and sold to the Sultan who's looking for the Dingy who are I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Half, like, genie. I can't, can't remember. Anyways, she has magic power. She can control the sand to live with him. And before she becomes conscious, they do a surgery on her. This happens at the very beginning of the book, so it's not really spoilers. Um, so that they, they implant iron under her skin and, um, a couple and some coppers so that she has to obey whatever the sultan says and so she spends all of this book pretty much in the harem with the other women she meets up with some people from her past as well which is really interesting and some things happen and at the end there's a huge blowout which was very interesting so the third and final book hero at the fall picks up exactly where the left last one left off. Uh, the rebel army sort of thing has just been destroyed by the Sultan and uh, there's not really anything that they can do at this point to really get it back together. So Amani has stepped up into the role of leader for various reasons and this book is mostly about them going to going trying to go and rescue the rest of the people who were captured and now are like being used as slave labor. Uh, so again, very interesting. I like this a little bit less than uh, the, the second book, but it was still really good, really quick read. And I think that the ending was really good. It was a very good conclusion to the series and it just kind of like, wrapped things up really, really nicely. So that's all of the spoilers done, especially for the latter part of the series if you haven't read the first book yet. And uh, now we're going to get into my ratings. So I rated Rebel of the Sands 3 out of 5, and then I rated both Traitor to the Throne and Hero at the Fall 4 out of 5. So it's like a four star series I guess. I don't think this is going to be a series that I end up buying. I do own this book. These two I obviously got from the library and I don't think that this is going to be one that I keep in my collection just because I didn't love it enough 
to keep it but it is really interesting and something that I would definitely recommend they're very very quick reads there's a lot of high action in them that's going to get you really into the book and really motivated to finish it I read all of these in a couple of days this one was 500 this sorry this one was over 500 this one um, was close to 500 and this one was the shortest and I think that was around 300 or so so like quick quick reads which is great I just found it so hard to picture myself in the world which is something for me that is a big mark of a well-written book like for example in the second book Traitor to the Throne uh, there's some times where they're seeing dignitaries from other countries that they're in conflict with or want to make an alliance with and none of their uniforms or anything about them has been described or explained. Same with a lot of the characters that are from other countries. You're just kind of left to assume what they look like based on how their names sound, which I just don't think is, you know, a super strong way to write a book. I would have liked to have seen just a couple of paragraphs here and there describing what people are wearing and a little bit more description of what they look like. I think that would have made it a lot easier for me to picture this world um, and picture how they're moving through it. But again, really cool series and that's the only bad thing I have to say about it. So really very few complaints. Let me know down in the comments if you've read the series and what you think about it and or if you're thinking about picking it up now based on what I said uh, if you're on the fence I would definitely say take it out from your library it is worth the read and I think it can be really a really enjoyable series uh, I just would wouldn't hasten to go out and buy it if you are sitting on the fence but if you're thinking yes this sounds like something I would love I want to read this then definitely go out and buy them um, quick fun fact too the author is Canadian, so good old CanCon. But that's all I have to say, so make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more Series Sundays videos. I promise that they're going to come eventually, um, and if you have any ideas of other things that I can do on Series Sundays when I don't have series that I've finished, drop those down in the comments below. I would love to make some more content, but that's all I have to say, so we'll see you in my next video.